This man had experienced not just Jesus supernaturally, but they had experienced the Holy Ghost. In Acts chapter 2, the Bible said all of them were filled. All of them. No exception. All of them were filled. It was like light, like fire lighting up on the head of each person. It was like tongues of fire. And every single one of them was filled. Don't tell me that those men will forget that encounter. So when you see them running with the mandate of Jesus, it's because of what they had encountered. Number three, from the third incident I shared with you. The Lord said to me, many of my children are yet to truly encounter and develop faith in the gospel of the kingdom of God. And then he said, son, that's why I've been giving you the instruction I'm giving you in 2025. Teach. Go back to the basics. Act like you just come back to the upper room. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2025, we're introducing a midweek service just for teaching the word. Just teaching the word. I promise you, every Wednesday, it will be one chapter, but we're going to do in-depth teaching. The Lord said, teach my children. He said, hold fire with HOP for now. Moreover, you need to train more people to do this HOP thing. He said, but teach. He said, there are many who are in Milton Keynes who may not be ready to come to a Sunday church. But they're going to come to sit down and be taught. And when they're taught well from the Bible, that's how they're going to make a decision that they want KFMI to be the place. The Lord said, there is a place where we have a head knowledge about certain truths of God's word. But there's a place where it's deep in your soul. I remember one, one of the days while we were in South Africa, I mean, Ian and Daniel will remember this. Um, I'd finished preaching and then I, I just had it in my heart. I wanted to do the words of knowledge and pray for the sick. And I was doing that and I was doing that. And then after a while, about half an hour later, the, the bishop came and the bishop said, hey, I can see. That Apostle Daniel is really passionate about praying for the sick. Why don't we introduce another meeting tomorrow morning, which never existed, and said, all of you who are sick, all of you who need this, come. And then I remember on the last day, because one of the things I'm always interested in at the end of any meetings where God has sent me on an assignment is to like literally ask the Lord, Lord, are you pleased? Did I do what you wanted me to do here? Are you pleased? And then I sometimes would find out from my host as well. How do you feel about the conference? Are you pleased? And he said, man, I just wanted my people to be taught. I noticed you wanted to pray for the sake and stuff like that. And I know that's good. Said, but I wanted them to be taught. He said, are you noticing how everybody's talking about occupy, 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 occupy in every conversation? He said, that's what I want. And then the Lord said, make sure, son, you have a balance of word and spirit. Yeah. Word and spirit. Yeah. Some people experience spiritual activity, they shout, they whatever, but there's not enough word. It's the word that sustains you when there's difficulty. It's the word that sustains you against the challenges that the enemy brings. It's the word that gives you the faith for victory. I've seen different church movements in the body of Christ. Some church movements go for a lot of experiencing the spirit. But then I see a lot of very spooky, weird people in those church movements too. Very spooky, very weird. They do all the shaking, they do all the shouting, but nothing is working in their lives. No fruit. Then I've seen the side where it's teaching, 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 but no move of the Holy Spirit. You enter into the environment, is as dead as cold water freezer or ice water freezer. And the Lord said you must have a good mix of the both. Good teaching and then you pursue the movement of my spirit. He said, those who don't know my word will not be able to interpret the move of my spirit. Those who don't know my spirit, they will receive the letter of the word, but they will not receive the spirit of the word. And so the Lord said, it is impossible to believe the gospel wholeheartedly and yet remain selfish. I don't want to sound mean and I don't want to sound bad, but one of the things the Lord said to me is many of my children in these last days are just pure selfish. He said, too many of my children are self-centered. Everything's all about them, 
their own life, their money, their family, them, them, them. But they don't live a life for others. Two weekends ago, I was invited to preach at a conference in Essex. The theme of the conference was the abundant life. And the Lord went, to, told me to go teach there about John 10.10. 10. There were some of the members of the church went there with me. And the Lord said the abundant life is a life that overflows from you to another. He said many of my children don't have the abundant life because they don't have a desire to overflow to other people. He said some people just say, I just want enough for myself. It sounds like a very humble prayer. God, I don't want to be rich. I just want enough to pay my bills. But it's actually not a humble prayer. It's a selfish prayer. And the Lord said, what we should be aiming for is a life that abundantly flows into others. Your life should be so full, it's flowing into other people. Somebody should be waking up somewhere in the world and be thanking God that they know you. Somebody should go to bed saying, thank God I met that man. Thank God I met that woman. It's called an overflowing life. And the Lord said, with a combination of my spirit and my word, your fruits will overflow. It's not talk. It's not talk. It's not, oh, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. No, you're not there. It's not even, I want to do more, I want to do more, I want to do more. God will know when you have more to give. I mean, the Lord actually spoke to me. There's, there's a spiritual uh, son of mine that I was speaking to. And the Lord said, tell him, I need him spending more time with me. To be full with me than focusing on what he wants to do outwardly. Said, I'm not done with him. God is interested in your being, not your doing. In your being, when you are full, you will naturally overflow. If you keep going to him, you're spending time with him, spending time in his word. There's no way you will get filled and the natural thing is you will overflow and everybody around you will be a partaker of it. But if your cup is not full, and you're saying, let me add it. Let me add it. You know, you're not giving me an opportunity. Let me add it. The Lord is saying, no, it doesn't work like that. I pray that the Lord will bless us with fruits in our lives that cannot be hidden. Fruits that cannot be denied. Fruits that cannot be hidden. I try not to talk about people because I don't want to attract any kind of envy or, or attack spiritual warfare. But... I will buy Pastor T's book because I met her as a single mother of three children. Three young children. And over the last 10 years, I see the fruit of those three young children. Over nine years, the three of them never failed to serve in this church. They never failed to come to church. They never failed to listen to their mother concerning their education. One's graduated, two more are graduating in a few months. And I can say, all right, bring your book, I will buy it. Because it worked. It worked, it worked. Because you were naturally what you call a disadvantage. No resident daddy. But the disadvantage did not stop. Sorry, I don't mean to put you on the spot, Pastor T. You know I love you. Um, I just, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Obstacles to soul winning in this generation, we have to talk about it because in this last days there are obstacles. There's the deception of Babylon. When we talk about Babylon, we're talking about the mammon system. The system of this world, the system of I've got to make it, I've got to hustle, I've got to make it, I've got to hustle, I've got to make it. Men gathered together in this building on Friday and we had a night vigil prayer. And um, I said something to the men when I looked around the room. I thank God for all the men that was there. I said, men, do you know that if this had been a ladies only night vigil and all the men breathe in and breathe out and said, this room will be full and overflowing. Then I said, so what is it? Now, I don't mean this as an indictment and I really would prefer if the ladies are not speaking at this time because, you know, the responsibility of the men is completely different and the attack against men is completely different. But... I realized one of the most important things with us is the things we have to deal with. Every man has to make it. We've got to make income. 
We've got to make a living. We've got to take care of family. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. And sometimes we can get so sucked into that place. And if we're not careful, there's a lot of hustling. And then the important things may suffer. May God grant us the grace to get the balance right. There's the deception of Babylon today. It causes many believers to give a lot more time and attention to the world of mammon, wealth, and all that than to God. The Antichrist agenda is also major. There's a lot of hostility against Christian mindset and Christian teachings today. I thank God for what's happened in America. I pray it's going to spill over here. I hear the new president has put down one of the first agenda he has. He's going to stop that foolishness of changing the sex of children without their parents' consent. You know? And I, and I said to myself, there's a lot of that stuff in our world today. We have work to do in the United Kingdom. That's part of, again, of the assignment of KFMI 2025. I'm going to be sharing a lot with you over the weeks. I'm not actually waiting till the 31st of December. Neither am I waiting till the 1st of January to share some things. So there's certain things the Lord said we're going to go for that he said, start sharing it now. One of it is how does KFMI engage with the community in KFMI, sorry, in Milton Keynes. And the Lord said, ask my children. Every one of you whom God has given a vision, put a proposal together of your vision. And I don't want you to just say, oh, pastor, God's been speaking to me about. No, write the vision down. Put the proposal together. Bring it. I'm not guaranteeing you that every proposal will be accepted, but we'll pray over it. And if the Lord bears witness with the proposal and the readiness of the person who's going to do it, I promise you, I will back you financially. I will back you with meeting rooms in this building. I will back you spiritually with prayer because God said, it is time. It is time. KFMI is not just about people gathering into a room to get blessed. It's about people going out into Milton Keynes and helping with the issues. I have to schedule an appointment with certain individuals that are leaders in Milton Keynes with one goal. I'm just to go into their office and say, tell me about the challenges of Milton Keynes. I represent a church movement. We just want to know how we can serve you. That's all. We just want to know how can our church serve you in this city. Tell me what are the challenges. And I will bring the list back to you. Whether it's teenagers, whatever the challenges are. And then ask you who has a calling from God to run with this issue. And make a difference in the life of the people. Is that a good thing? I'm going to be talking to you more about that in the weeks to come. Political correctness, suppressing Christian witnessing, mind your own business culture. I was in Pennsylvania about a month ago. There's a pastor. Well, he used to be an evangelist. He's now a pastor, um, Paul, Paul Martini. Some of you may remember Paul Martini visited our church many years ago. Now he pastors a church in, uh, in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and, and they're doing home fellowship. And then, you know, Paul was talking about it. And then William Wood was talking about the fact that culture is different. And the reason why fellowships sometimes struggle in certain cultures there are cultures of people that are already used to, they eat together, they come together and so on and so forth, like the Hispanic culture. And said, but there are cultures like England and America that people just like to do, mind your own business, that there's so much challenges that does not allow us to see the kind of small group growth you will see in South America or South Korea. We don't find it anywhere in England. So all of these things look like it's what negates us. But the Lord said, these challenges, even though they may look overwhelming, yet the sons of God who have had a true encounter with Christ, a true encounter with his Holy Spirit, and a true encounter with his word, we will win and disciple souls regardless. Somebody say regardless. We will do it regardless. Lately, I'm feeling the anointing of going against the grain. I'm feeling the anointing of doing the things that they say is not popular. I have some new heroes. One of them is Elon Musk. Those guys are called disruptors. Disruptors are the people who will do things that everybody says cannot be done. And they will see to it and do it. My biggest hero right now is Donald Trump. 
I know few ministers that have the backbone and the resilience and the stubbornness that a man says, I have a goal and you can't stop me. Throw everything you have at me. And then when it comes to the issue of running to win, I mean, when you talk about hard work, somebody did statistical analysis. They said over the last three years, he's done 800 rallies and meetings. In your 70s, jump on the plane, come up the plane, enter a car, go to a rally, speak one hour, go back into a car, go into the plane, fly to another city, jump out of the plane. I'm like, man, who does this? How much more a billionaire who does not need anything for the rest of his life? Because some people just make some very stupid statements, ignorant statements. Oh, is this is racist? I'm like, come on, wake up. He doesn't need any of this. Many of us Christians, we don't have up to a million pounds in our account. We can't do anything for God. We'll be enjoying vacation and enjoying all these different things. I mean, look at beautiful golf properties, golf resorts. If he just wants to enjoy his private plane and be on a yacht and enjoy all of his life, he can. Why put yourself through all that? Everybody loved you when you did Apprentice and all of that stuff until you ran in elections. Then you became the enemy. All these people loved you before. And the Lord said, you see, learn from these men who are resilient, who have staying power. Many of us pastors are weak. They talk about us. They gossip about us. Somebody leaves church and attacks us and we quit. We're not doing it again. I'm thinking, hey, look at this guy. He doesn't even know the word that much. Many times when he's talking about his faith, he uses the word religion. So I know he's a young babe in the Lord. But God chose him anyway. And the people who still want to argue whether God chose him, well, I leave you to your own ideologies. Because if, if God is not with a man, there's no way in this world that he would have made it to this week. If God is not for you, what does it take to crush somebody? 80% of pastors in America, as far as I'm concerned, cannot go through what that one person has been through. Have, have they lied about you before? Have you had people tarnish your character before? Have you ever had to endure your name being used and they're making up stories about you that is not true? Do you know how, how annoying that thing is? The first time I encountered it on a serious scale, my mouth was secreting bad. I was just angry. To even make it matters worse, I remembered ministering to that person, caring for that person, fasting to pray for that person. And I'm like, and this person can say this thing it's like i'm just mad right now and the lord is like oh they've said worse to other people calm yourself down daniel and just go go and preach my gospel and relax <laughs> we need resilience how many people walk away they dump the department dump serving god dump the fellowship dump everything and say i'm offended somebody said this to me or somebody did that and god said you guys don't have any backbones you're my children you're in my church but i need you to become a lot stronger you're making it too easy for the devil to defeat you yeah. Yeah. so finally i say this what difference can one person make i'm enjoying the message too much i just need to stop what difference can one person make? On this trip to South Africa, when we left Mpumalanga and Nels prayed in Mpumalanga to fly back to Johannesburg, Apostle Macavo, Apostle Afri Macavo met us at the airport and took the whole team out and he took us sightseeing. The first place he took us to was Soweto. We did a tour of Mandela's house. And as we did the tour of Mandela's house, the tour guide was teaching us about what this man went through. And everything in me was, ah, God, don't let me come into this world and go unknown, unsung, uncelebrated. God, don't let me. I mean, it's like one man has made such an indelible mark. And as I listened to it, I thought, what kept him going? All those years on Robin Island. All those years in that captivity. They allow only two letters a year. He can only have two letters a year. 
one visitation but not family. And year after year after year. And the Lord said, one person can do so much if you're determined. Hey, some people say, oh, Pastor Daniel is a friend. You know, there used to be a time when a lot of people were ashamed to talk about their support for Trump. Not anymore. Don't believe all these lies they tell you on BBC and ITV. It's a lie from the pit of hell. A lot of people have changed their mind because they've seen qualities that made them say, no, these are great qualities in a person. And one of the things that they said many people had started saying was that once upon a time they were ashamed to identify. But then they began to say, this guy has changed the entire Republican Party. One of the things they used to say about the Republican Party was that it was the party of the rich. It was the party of the people of a certain echelon who didn't care about the poor. It was the party of the capitalists. But on record today, they now say he's been to the hood. He's been to places that even a, a man who claims to be African-American like Obama never went to. He's been to the hood, been to barber shops, and some of those guys said, wait a minute, they've been lying to us. This guy comes to our hood. And then somebody saying he's racist. And now they're saying the party is the party of Donald Trump. And again, that concept comes to my mind that one man, how does one man make such an impact? If any of you remember in 2016, there were people who didn't like him, even in the party. The party establishment thought, who, who are you from business world? entertainer what do you think is going on here go and sit down somewhere and now they're saying he's changed the entire party one man what manner of man are you what manner of woman are you so some of you are going to see me run this 2025 remember when i told you at the beginning of 2024 catch me if you can when i came off the aircraft from johannesburg it was my 40th aircraft this year I'd never had a year that I'd been on 40 different aircrafts traveling in one year. But this year, I'm looking to God to help me make impact in Milton Keynes. Catch me if you can when it comes to touching life in Milton Keynes. I want to see lives touched in Milton Keynes. I want to see us begin to affect marriages, affect families, affect even the economy of Milton Keynes. Because that's the assignment of Occupy. What matter of man are you? Are you still one of those that is saying... What can I do? I bring this message to a close with this. Do you love Jesus? In John chapter 14 verse 15, Jesus said, if you love me, you would obey my commandments. The Holy Spirit said to me, the great commandment to win souls and disciple souls is a commandment. It's not a suggestion. Don't tell Jesus you love him if you do absolutely nothing about his commandments. So the question is, do you love Jesus? Do you love him? The second question is, do you love people? 1 Corinthians chapter 13 tells us there are sacrifices people can do, but if you have no love. I heard last week, Pastor Reed brought us a message now that we're in the miracle center. What next? And somebody keeps telling, someone, I've had probably three different people tell me the first thing she talked about was love. And the Lord just reminded me, love is actually the real motive that should be behind any ministry oh he just wants it for wealth how much money does a man need in their lifetime oh it's just because it's racist no it's a love for country I'm not an American citizen but I love that country enough that I saw the damage that was done over the last three years I didn't like it now the Lord has awakened my love for Great Britain like never before. Every day now I'm reading and I'm following what's going on. Who is Kemi Badinok? Lord, is she one that you've chosen? What are you doing with the Conservative Party, Lord? I'm asking questions now. Lord, what about my friend? Does anybody know my friend? Does anybody know that party, that other guy who was always called racist? Nigel Farage. I've never believed Nigel Farage is racist. I've always believed he's a nationalist. He loves his country. 
he loves his country and he does not believe that his country should be destroyed he does not believe that the borders should be open to the people who don't care about England who just want to come in and destroy the country I don't call him a racist he's a nationalist he just loves his country he spent over 20 years in the European um, members of member as a European member of parliament trying to get England out of the rubbish issue that they had been in. But are you praying? Do you have a love for people? I'm praying for a love for Milton Keynes. In my lifetime, I must make impact in Milton Keynes. Do you have a love for Great Britain? carry the black passport I still have my red one do you just have the passport or do you love the country do you have a love for the people that you walk past every day let's rise up together understand that all you need for life has already been provided by God we don't need to hustle so much and have no time for God There is a call. Let's start with a call to Milton Keynes. People will be like, hey, pastor, did you just wake up to this? Yes, everything happens in stages. There was a season when God said, just focus on the people I bring to you. Then there was a season where he said, just focus on building for me. Focus on Miracle Center. Focus on 300 Gideon's army. Now the Lord is saying, focus on Milton Keynes. Pray until you get to the place where when you walk down the road, you feel love for the people you see. How many people will be very honest with me that you're not there yet? That you can easily walk past people in the streets and you feel nothing for them. Now we're going to pray about it. Because the Lord says, they're my children. And that's the reason why I created KFMI. There's over 250,000 people in Milton Keynes. 95% of those people are not necessarily in church today. As of this morning, some people, are, oh, well, gardening season is over. Some are walking their dog, some are watching newspaper, some are watching their favorite Sunday morning news. Have absolutely no idea about God absolutely no need to have anything to do with God but God is saying you know you know about me you've enjoyed my protection you've enjoyed my blessing you've enjoyed my favor so what are you going to do about it and I end with that question again why bother bring somebody to church why bother to bring somebody next week why bother to bring somebody for 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock and fill this building as quickly as possible? Why bother? I can answer that question for you because that's the heart of God. That's the most important thing you could ever in your life do for God. Bring people to Him and help those people to grow in their knowledge and their worship of Him. Let's bow our heads for prayer. If this message has touched your heart, I want you to just take a moment to talk to the Lord. I believe the first response is repentance. That's the first response. Just to say, Lord, I'm sorry I've not been doing enough. If my message has convicted you, that maybe you've been too much into your own self tell the Lord I'm sorry Pastor Daniel how do I know if you have any reason whatsoever why you currently do not roll up your sleeves and serve if you're one of those whom God has given enough qualities you have enough qualities, wisdom, knowledge, understanding to be a leader in the house of God. Not as a title, but as a champion of the advancement of the work of God. Tell the Lord you're sorry. Why would you join a department and be on the people who don't have the capacity you have, don't have the training you have in leadership, just because you're not willing to pay the price to be that person? Ask the Lord, please forgive me. 
Then I ask everybody under the sound of my voice to pray a fresh prayer of dedication to the Lord. The Lord, I ask you to be the Lord of my life. I give you my life. I give you my life. Lord, I give you my life. Please feel free to repeat after me. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for giving your only begotten Son for me. Now, Father, I ask that my life be given to you. I give you my life. I give it all to you. Lord, have your way in me. You are my Lord from this day forward. It's no longer my life. It's your life. So, Lord, realign my priorities. Realign my agenda. Realign my weekly schedule. I give you permission to change my schedule. I give you permission to change my priorities on where I spend my resources because I belong to you. And I ask that this will be so now and forevermore. Amen. Now I did not want you before the praying that prayer that please don't pray that prayer if you're not ready. But if you pray that prayer and you're ready, then you're saying to him, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This very morning I was trying to get out of the house as quickly as possible because I wanted to get here for 8 o'clock. I said to Pastor Ruth, I said, as a leader, I want to be there before we start 9 o'clock service. Let me see what time do people come. Let me see, do we have what it takes? Are my leaders committed enough to this? Are the workers committed enough? Do we have the right attitude and the heart to really serve you, God, in this season? And then she looked at me, and I know one of the things we talk about in leadership, she's like, as a leader, you don't have to be there. And I just said to her, I said, so what am I doing? What else is important in my life? What am I going to be lying down on this bed to do? What am I going to be holding back in this house to do? As long as I don't shack my responsibility as a husband to her, and my responsibility as a father to my children, my life belongs to God whatever you want however you want it God it is yours it is yours I dare not say I will have my own agenda if you say cancel the trip I cancel it I was not supposed to be here today I was supposed to already be in, in Pakistan because I had three invitations from three different ministries the first ministry was this weekend and I said Lord my heart is really yearning for my own church family I want to see men and women come into their maximum potential and so I called that ministry and I said I'm sorry not this time maybe next time they said okay apostle we understand but whenever you get to Karachi at least meet with us I was supposed to be gone I chose not to I pray over you in the name of Jesus Christ that this message will be a reality for you. And please understand, this is not about ministry, full-time ministry. It's not about pastor. Every single one of us, it's about us being children of God. If you're a child of God, there's a mandate on your life. If you're a child of God, there's a call on your life. It could be as a doctor, as a nurse, as an engineer, as a business person, whatever it is, just make up your mind, Lord, my time, my talent, my skills, what you use to bless those companies you work for, what you use to advance those companies that you work for, use those same gifts to advance the kingdom of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Lord, I have delivered the message to the best of my ability. Holy Spirit, you finish the work. Holy Spirit, convict us, including myself, what I must do for a different 2025 how we will finish 2025 and all of us will look at each other and will be proud of our accomplishments for you help us lord in jesus name we pray amen and amen and amen